Well, we got uh, some shows to talk about, and I thought SmackDown had two really good angles and a really good match. I thought the show was good. So it it's opened easy, up with Ray. Easy, easy to watch. Easy to watch. The, yeah, the, the, the LWA angle I liked is very good. LWO and Ray came out, and uh, they're talking about how Logan stole Ray's U.S. title, and if I hadn't got hit with those knucks, I'd still be champion. And suddenly outstorms Carlito, and he gets in the ring, and he says, listen, we're not going to talk about what happened at Crown Jewel. He says, you're blaming the wrong person. Don't blame Logan. Blame the guy that left the brass knucks on the apron, Santos Escobar. And him and Carlito get in an argument, and they get pulled apart, and Santos says he's had enough, and he screams at Ray, you chose him over me, and he leaves through the crowd, and Ray goes after him, and Lashley comes out for the match with Carlito. So they're doing the match, and, uh, of course, uh, Cruz del Toro and the Street Profits and Joaquin all get into a fight, and so Santos and runs Cru down. Cruz and uh, Joaquin did not do well in this fight. No. So Santos comes down, and he tries to make the save. This distracts the ref. And so Montez clunks Carlito, and Lashley gets the pin. So the heels are stomping on Carlito after the match. Santos gets on the apron, but he's not helping Carlito, because Carlito, of course, no, he just stood, accused him of he this. He stood there. He did the Drew McIntyre thing. And he just stood there not helping. And Ray ran down with a chair to make the save, and the heels go running. So then Ray and Santos get into an argument, and Santos telling him, it's supposed to be me and you, it's supposed to be family. Ray's telling him that we're all a family, we're all the LWO, and Santos uh, ends up getting shoved by Ray. And then Ray kind of feels bad, and so he goes to check on Carlito, and Santos is about to leave, but he changes his mind, and he attacks Ray. And so he's beating him up for a while, and then he starts to feel bad about it. And so uh, they kind of make up for a moment, but then uh, Santos ends up posting Ray. Ray falls with his legs stuck in between the ring steps. Santos drop kicks the steps, tells Ray it's all his fault. This all happened. Ray made him do it. And then he leaves, and Zelina runs down. She's all upset. So uh, Santos has turned. He's yeah, turned he on totally Ray turned. Mysterio. And poor Ray just cannot keep a friend for the life of him. No, or a son. And man, he's turning to sting. He is. And then Kevin Owens is doing commentary. Although you know, you know what? I mean, on this run, I mean no one's turned on Sting in this whole run, had they? Uh no, not yet. He's the uh, old Sting. I don't think anyone's turning on him on the, I don't think anyone's gonna turn on him. Time's running out. I hope the Darby does not turn on him there at the very end. Oh, that tar be Darby being healed would horrible. Be good. Horrible ending. I'll tell but you anyway, what, Dar Dar Darby, Darby's shoulder's in bad shape. Yeah, he had the big thing on tonight. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that. Corey and Carmella, uh, congratulations to them. They had a baby. And so Corey was not on the show, and Kevin Owens replaced him to do commentary. And even Kevin Owens, after this angle, says, You know, I've turned on my fair share of people in my life, but even I could never turn on Rey Mysterio. So he's disgusted at what happened with Santos. So then Bailey comes out. Kevin for a Owens promo. has turned on everyone in the world, but he never turned on Ray. Yeah, I never guess. turned on Ray. So Bailey comes out for a promo next, and they were all over the show here. And she said she had a plan for Eo and Dakota, but she had no idea that uh, Kyrie was going to show up. And Eo, Dakota, and Kyrie all come out, and uh, Eo said, "Well, I had a plan as well. It's my era as well." I have a pirate here to help me retain the title. Isn't that what you wanted? And Bailey says, yeah, I want the best for all of you. Except uh, the last time we saw Kyrie, this happened. They showed footage from July of 2020 of Bailey, who was actually wearing the exact same outfit, uh, beating up and uh, sending Kyrie out of WWE. And Dakota takes the mic and she says, we didn't bring Kyrie here to hurt you. We brought her here to make damage control stronger. And clearly it worked. Io is still the champion. Damage control is stronger. We should all be celebrating. So Kyrie then says, Bailey, I forgive you. And she wants a hug, but Bailey says she doesn't hug anymore. So all three of them force Bailey to do a hug. And then Bianca comes out and she says, Kyrie might forgive you, but I don't. I thought that Io had the confidence to go one on one, but that was crazy. She says, A lot of people don't like damage control. So she brings out Charlotte and Asuka, and this sets up a six-person match for the main event. We had Bianca, Charlotte, and Asuka versus Kyrie, Io, and Bailey as the main event. 
And this was more an angle than a match. They got they first they got the heat for a while on Bianca, and then Charlotte got a hot tag, and then they're teasing the tag to Asuka. They're teasing the tag. They're teasing the tag. Yanked off the apron the whole nine yards. And finally, she's about to make the tag, and Asuka pulls her arm away. And Bianca is just shocked. And Asuka then mists her, kills her with a kick, and her and Kyrie. They hug, and the crowd actually popped big for Asuka and Kyrie hugging their former tag team. And then Kyrie, Io, and Asuka have this big group hug, and they demand Bailey join in. And so Charlotte then hits the ring, and they all start beating her down. For some inexplicable reason, even though this involved everyone in the tag team match, this was a disqualification when they started stomping down Charlotte. Well, they, and then they were Char- all, well, well the, the, the heel team, with, with the help of Asuka, but they were all in the ring at the same time, and they wouldn't stop. So well, it was like, know, but it were... breaks down into four ways all the time in these tag matches. This happens all the time. It's it's completely it's, ju- it's, like the the referee's discretion when he decides he's had enough. Yeah, but, but it was it was it was four people beaten on one and they wouldn't stop. Well, isn't you know, there that the rule that if, if if the illegal person in WWE yes. hits the legal person that it's a yes, DQ? Yes, yes, yes. So this yes. were two there were two illegal persons in this one. Yeah, but it's like a secret rule. Well, it was pretty flagrant. Flagrant. So then Shotzi hits the ring to save Charlotte. She gets beaten up. Io lays out Charlotte with the moonsault. Kyrie kills Bianca with the spinning back fist and the flying el- uh, the flying elbow, and uh, all of damage control. So it's now uh, you know Bailey and and uh, Oscar and Io and Kyrie and Dakota Kai. They're all standing there over the the baby faces. The crowds, I mean, it was a hot crowd. I mean, this felt like a hot angle. And it felt like a, uh, obviously they're going to do uh, war games with Kyrie, Eo, Bailey, and Oscar versus Charlotte, Bianca, Shotzi, and I guess Becky Lynch. Apparently well, they, may, be they, may, they may end person. up with five on five. Because usually war games is five on five. I think they've already announced the men are four on four. But Drew McIntyre may be in there, and they may be adding another person there, too. That's def- I know for a fact that that is under consideration. Well, I guess we shall see. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drew at McIntyre. this point, the four-on-four four would be uh, Charlotte and Bianca right, 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 and right, right. Shotzi and Becky. Yeah. Against Kyrie. They may, they may go. I mean, it was set up, it was set up for four-on-four, four, you know, with them yeah. picking one more partner. But, yeah, so the, in the men's match, um, you know, it would be Drew on the um, – on the uh, what's it called the um, Judgment Day team, yeah, and then there'd be that, to, and to do that they'd have to pick a baby face, which um, you know I guess that someone's going to do a save. I mean I don't know who it would be. Could be Kevin Owens. I mean the one thing you can say about WWE is that they are not afraid to push the hell out of their women's division because uh, this was a hot angle and they're going to be doing a well uh, they have to do something. It's it's freaking war games. You have well, to do I an know, angle. but I mean, dude. They had Halloween Havoc. The first night of Halloween Havoc was mostly women's matches. Yeah. And uh, they do a lot with the women. And I bring mm-hmm. that up because we're going to review AEW here where they do not do a lot with the women. Yeah, but you know, I mean, even though this last week actually was the, the um, you know, it was not the case, on the show that had all those women's matches, it was the lowest percentage of women viewers of any wrestling show in a long, long time. Lots of guys watched, but not well, so many okay. women. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the big fallacies of, like, oh, the reason AEW doesn't have a lot of women fans is because they don't do a lot of women's matches. The fact is, is when the more women's matches WWE does, the less women fans end up watching. It's more guys. So that's just how it is. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.